I always used to have this sense of I can take on the world. I was always a very positive person and Parkinson's tends to make you fearful, anxious. And since the treatment, I'm back to being my old positive self again and that's half the battle because no matter what you've got, if you can look at the glass half full, you're halfway there as far as conquering it and not giving in to it. Margaret Jarrett is not the kind of person to give up. After living with Parkinson's for over 10 years, she jumped at the chance to be part of a trial for a radical new treatment using infrared light. My voice was very soft and um, croaky, and it was very slow. I was very slow, slow in moving and pulling my jeans up. It was like you'd think of something to do and you do it, but it'd be like in slow motion, a delayed reaction before it would actually happen. And using the laser has brought everything back to how it used to be. Obviously, the light hat has done amazing things for um, my speech and my sense of smell and, and uh, yeah, my handwriting. And my general demeanour has been more cheerful than it was. George Wilcox had a career in chemistry and was not about to let Parkinson's take over his life. He did his own research into light therapy and started using an infrared skull cap at home. Well, I did know about the fact that near infrared light can penetrate flesh and bone, so I wasn't too skeptical at, the t at all. It gets right down to the, believe it or not, into the cell structure in the brain and affects what they call the mitochondria in the cell, which in turn increases the amount of um, neurotransmitters in the brain. The light therapy increases the energy or the metabolism in the cell and it has a flow on effect on the cellular processes, uh, which include processes in the nerves and in the brain. Dr. Anne Liebert's been using light therapy to heal ulcers and wounds and relieve musculoskeletal pain for over 30 years. But what her trial revealed was the positive impact of red light therapy, not just on the brain, but also on the gut. We put it on the abdomen three times a week and it is designed to decrease inflammation, which has an effect on increasing dopamine and serotonin and reducing the symptoms of Parkinson's and we found that this was often the first symptom to improve and they were able to improve their gut symptoms to a point that it made a lot of difference to their quality of life. I've switched it on at the back, like so. George suffered chronic bowel issues as early symptoms of Parkinson's but was unaware of the benefits of light therapy until the trial. I did the, the, the skull cap business for a couple of years and then I, we went to a conference, uh, the Parkinson's conference in Adelaide in 2019, and uh, a lady called Dr Anne Liebert gave a talk on light, laser light on the gut. And she was reporting some interesting results with um, altering the gut microbiome uh, makeup, which enabled people to to use their bowels more regularly, et cetera, et cetera, and ease constipation. So I thought, wow, that's interesting, because the light hat hadn't done much for my gut, but it did a lot for my speech and my smell. So I thought I'd give that a go. The combination of the two treatments, or the treatments by themselves, have been giving a sustained improvement in um, people's energy, their um, ability to produce mitochondrial ATP and be able to have energy helps in their motor and non-motor skills. Is this a treatment you recommend for all sufferers of Parkinson's disease or is it something you'd recommend on a case-by-case -case basis? We would recommend this um, for all Parkinson's sufferers as there are no side effects or um, adverse outcomes, but there are a small subset of people that are very sensitive to light that would not be able to have the treatment. So we would advise people to um, also consult their clinicians as well. I'm coping better every day. I'm doing just that little bit better. And I'm stopping declining, that's the most important thing, because I was a mess when I, when I first got diagnosed, didn't want to get out of bed. After a month, I had my sense of smell back. 
I went to voting, and of course there's the usual sausage sizzle, which I'm used to looking at and not being able to smell the onions. And I could smell the sausages and onions, and I said to my husband, I could smell that. And I was all excited. <laughs>